elephants do seem to have almost like this sixth sense. They know uh, when there's danger. They know how to get around problems. They're very good at problem solving. When they find a, an electric fence, you know, they'll find a way to turn off the electricity. They'll often bully the youngster and push the, the younger elephant into the, bob, into the electric fence so that the others can climb over him to get onto the other side. I'm the Acting Executive Retail Editor and Events Director at Condé Nast Traveller. You may know some of our live events, Traveller's Tales, that we host in London. Well, during this period of lockdown, we have extended that to recorded Zoom conversations. And I'm joined now by Levison Wood, a British explorer, writer and photographer, who has published six best-selling books and produced a number of critically acclaimed documentaries which have been aired around the world. Your latest book is The Last Giants, and I was wondering what interested you in the subject of elephants? Well, the, I think my passion for elephants goes back to when I was about 10 years old, actually. I went to a, uh, an exhibition um, from the late artist uh, David Shepard, who um, I remember thinking, and that, even at that young age, I was like, wow, this guy uh, gets to go all the way around Africa painting pictures of elephants, and, and it was so inspiring that I decided one day I was going to go and do something similar. So this is kind of my way of um, fulfilling that dream, really. Um, for the last maybe seven or eight years, I've been um, a, an ambassador for the conservation charity, the Tusk Trust, um, which goes back to my walking the Nile expedition when I walked through lots of parts of East Africa. So it's been a, it's been a real lifelong um, fascination with these amazing creatures and so I thought why not do a whole project around you know on the theme of elephants um, and I was offered the opportunity to make a documentary called Walking with Elephants um, and uh, so I thought why not write a book but rather than just doing it about that journey um, it's about the whole uh, issue of elephants where they came from their evolutionary and biological history uh, a lot of the issues that um, have faced them over the centuries and all the way up to modern day conservation. I mean, it's such a thorough accomplishment. Uh, I was wondering how you went about researching it. It must have taken a long time. It did. I mean, until last year, I'd sort of, I had a vague outsider's understanding of elephants, but only so much as I'd been on safari a few times and spent a bit of time in Africa. So when I started researching for this book, um, I had to read everything from, you know, the science elements and, and biology through to current studies in um, animal psychology, um, and then a lot of history, particularly around um, the ivory trade and poaching, and, uh, and also getting my head into the very complex nature of conservation, because there's lots of different conflicting theories on how things should, uh, should be, and, and how we go about working to save uh, endangered species. So it was, a, it was a really complex issue, and, and to try and convey that in anything other than academic terms, it's quite tricky because you don't want to you don't want to dumb anything down because it's a very important issue. But also, you want to make it uh, you know from, as a writer, I want to make it accessible and available to the to the layperson. So it's a, it's a tricky balance to find. Um, and, and and also, this is a departure for me, moving from journeys about my just my expeditions to something more broad brush. So it was uh, it was a big challenge, but. Um, Hopefully the, the end product is, is something that will interest people and, and get people to, um, to take an interest in, in elephants. Well, I think it's definitely very interesting. I was, I was fascinated reading about the way they communicate with each other, but also their history, the history of their role in our society. Um, so my next question is, um, what can you tell us about, their, about the history that they've played in our past, but also hopefully in our future? Hmm. Well, elephants have been around a lot longer than we have, human beings. They, you know, they used to, you know, roam all around the world. Um, they were on every continent except Australia and Antarctica. There were uh, elephants in North and South America, all their, their, their descendants, prehistoric variants of. And there used to be dozens of types of um, elephants or, or their predecessors. Um, and of course, what 
sort of killed them out, uh, killed them off in you know ten thousand years ago in the in, during the last ice age was was the spread of human beings around the planet. But one fascinating thing that that really got me was that there was an actual there was a population of woolly mammoths alive in Siberia at the same time that the pyramids were being built. Isn't that remarkable? Five thousand years ago, um, there were you know civilizations happening and, and also what we what we sort of imagine as this ancient prehistoric animal that, that died out a long time ago and it's um and it goes to show and and i think we've we've always regarded elephants in this fascination because they've they are you know the biggest land animal human beings have this symbiotic relationship where one that we're kind of scared of them because they're so, they're so big and they have a big capacity for destruction but also, you know, they've been, a, they've been a food source for human beings for a long, long time. And now as we, as we reach the point where that they are endangered, and you know, even in my lifetime, elephant numbers have dwindled by half. You know, there used to be a million when I was born, and now there's only 420,000. So the statistics are quite terrifying. And, you know, we need to really work hard now if we're going to save the species. And so what for me this project and this book was, was all about was to try and see if there is any hope and, and luckily there is but it's going to take some big sacrifices and a lot of hard work uh, and international cooperation um, for us to, to to try and save them and obviously things like the current pandemic which has a huge effect on funding and, and people's interests and when there's nobody going on safari then there's no money going into the economies so people get desperate or people will go and poach so we need to not forget that there is a big wide world out there. So how much time did you actually spend with the elephants? But obviously you, you've got your television series as well as the book. Um, could you tell us about the time you spent and following in their paths and what that was like? I mean, that was an amazing opportunity to, to get up close and personal to elephants. Um, I spent a month in Botswana walking with a herd of elephants on their migration to the Okavango Delta. Um, which was just a, an amazing experience, you know, through all sorts of different landscapes, environments, through the northern grasslands, along the rivers, across the, the salt pans, which are basically huge, they're like deserts, um, and then ending up in this lush, fertile swamp, the Okavango Delta. And um, for me, to, to, to get that close, I mean, there were times when we were five or six metres away from herds, you really get an understanding of how they think and how they behave and just how similar they are in many respects to us in, in their family makeup and the way that mothers and calves interact and the way that the young male elephants go and do their thing. And um, there's a real sense of intelligence and you, you feel a huge empathy to them when you, when you spend that kind of amount of time with them. So, yeah, it was a great, great opportunity to learn. And hopefully in doing so by, uh, you know, capturing that experience on film, because uh, the book and the TV series are very, very different. That, that, that journey alone was about one country. Obviously, the issues surrounding elephants in Botswana are very different to those in Kenya or in uh, West Africa or in South Africa. So um, it is only a glimpse, but hopefully it gives people uh, a sort of snapshot of some of the issues facing elephants and, and what it's like, you know, for, to be on foot in that environment. Do you think that the travel industry has a, a role, a greater role to play in the conservation of elephants? I mean, do you think the increase of, in people wanting to do low cost safaris might affect their well-being? Does it have a knock on effect? Well, I think the travel industry has a vital role to play in conservation because it's ultimately it's tourist dollars that go towards paying people's wages on the ground, whether that's um, employing people in direct roles as guides uh, and all the support staff, whether that's the rangers and the conservation approaches. And, and, and also, you know, if, if people um, don't go on, on safaris, whether they're the high end ones or the, or the cheaper ones, then uh, sadly, the, the, you know, that if that inter interest declines, then um, that I think that will mark the end of, of a lot of species. So I think tourism plays a really important part. There's obviously, uh, a way to do it you know you've got to be you've got to look at towards the sustainable model and, and ethical tourism um, but at the moment any tourism is good I think so we just need to encourage people to get back out there and back out um, uh, exploring the world at the earliest opportunity. And whilst you were out there with the elephants what was the most surprising thing 
that, that you experienced or learned? Well, I think in terms of elephants, it was probably just how close you can get without them getting uh, too upset. You've got to know what you're doing. And I was luckily in the very capable hands of a local sand bushman who knew exactly what elephants were doing in terms of their signals and their behavior. He could replicate the sound of any animal, which was great, because if we ever wanted to see lions, you know, he'd make the, the noise of a dying antelope and the lions would come to us. So, you know, it was amazing to get it, get so close, particularly on foot, because, you know, we often, when we go on safari, we associate that with being a sort of almost like a reverse zoo interaction, isn't it? Where you're in the vehicle, where you're kind of safe and the, the, the wildlife is roaming. But when you're on foot, it's a very different dynamic. But um, I found that very... Um, almost very natural because I think that's what humans, you know, we've evolved. That's how we evolved on the plains of Africa on foot, surrounded by predators, being alert. And whilst it's pretty terrifying at times also, it's, it just, it's the most liberating natural feeling in the world. The way you describe them when they're moving as well, you say that they can be so silent. If they, they realize that there's a threat, they can just, you turn around and you have a, another look back at the elephants, they've all gone. How is it that, that they move so silently? Because it was such a huge beast. I mean, that, that was one of the most surprising things for me anyway. I couldn't imagine that happening. Mm. Yeah, they are. I mean, they, I mean, they're very well camouflaged. You know, the, 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 those acacia bushes and the trees on um, it, all across Africa, the elephants just blend in so well. And they're about the same height as well, generally speaking. Um, so that they can just disappear in a moment. And they are very, like you say, they're very, very quiet. They can just just disappear into a thicket and into the bush and, and you won't see them. So if, if they don't want to be seen, um, you won't see them, which can mean it can be quite dangerous because if you're just walking around a thicket and suddenly you're in the middle of a herd, then it can be quite dangerous. So you've got to be very alert, very careful. And I was also surprised by the fact that there's this theory that they can communicate over long distances. Can you tell us about that? Well, what's amazing about elephants is that because they're so difficult to study um, and they've only really been studied in terms of their psychology and the way they communicate um, for the last 25, 30 years in, in depth, there's not that many studies on them. Um, and because we don't really domesticate them in any way um, and they're, you know, they're different enough from Asian elephants to, uh, to warrant, you know, they are their own species. Um, we don't generally know all that much about elephants. And so there's a lot of people, a few people working on how they communicate, but there is, there's a theory that they can communicate up to 20 kilometers away with different herds, sending messages through this low, deep grumbling in their larynx that goes through their, their, their stomach into the ground. And these seismic vibrations can be picked up by sensors in other elephants' feet. Um, and what that means is, in theory, messages can be passed on, whether that's about danger or there's poachers, whatever it might be. And elephants are known to be able to distinguish between different, um, different types of people, different ethnicities. They know if they see a weapon, they know that's danger. Um, there was a study, I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a theory about the Asian elephants in Sri Lanka when the tsunami came in 2004. Elephants were the first to detect it, and they all headed for the hills a long time before anyone else because of this very sensitive nature of their trunk and their, and their feet. Did you see any examples of this? I mean, the, the way that you describe how they pick, pick up on it, one elephant had put its trunk down on the ground and stood almost looking like it was in a trance. Mm. Um, did you see any examples of that? You see it all the time. You hear, you know, when you're walking along, you can hear the grumble, the deep contact call um, of the elephants. That, um, and you, it, because it's so... It's very visceral, it's all around, and you don't necessarily know which direction it's coming from, but that's an elephant who's seen you, even though you can't see them, passing on a message saying to people for me. And it's amazing how they do it. And do you believe they have intuition that, you know, you're talking about the intelligence of them, they're obviously known for being very wise and for having long memories, but mm. you mentioned then that they can tell if a weapon is going to be a source of danger. Do you think they're quite intuitive animals? I think whether it's intuition, whether it's experience, whether it's something that's passed down through their DNA and genes, there's lots of different theories on this, but elephants do seem to have almost like this sixth sense. They know uh, when there's danger, they know how to get around problems. They're very good at problem solving. Um, there's lots of anecdotal examples of how elephants, when they find a, an electric fence, 
you know, they'll find a way to turn off the electricity, whether that's pushing over a tree to like short circuit it, or there's been, you know, I've, I've heard lots of examples of if there's a, a youngster in the herd, the male elephants know that um, it's not going to kill them, but it'll hurt. So they, they, they often bully the youngster and push the, the younger elephant into the bob, into the electric fence so that the others can climb over him to get onto the other side, just as a bit of a joke. You know, it's, it's, done, in, it's done in a light-hearted way because elephants are also very known for their empathy and they, they'll, they'll often go back to rescue elephants that have fallen into mud holes, even if they're not relatives or they're necessarily their, 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 their offspring, they'll, they'll help each other. And uh, elephants are known for making diversions. And, and we all, we've all, all seen these videos on YouTube about elephants reaction to death you know there's lots of stories of if an elephant dies the rest of the herd will come back you know the following year to pay their respects and um they'll go and touch the bones um in a very almost like a ceremonial way and um there's another story of um when elephants accidentally killed a, a ranger um they were so embarrassed that the elephant, that the, the story goes that the elephants were so embarrassed by the fact that they killed a person accidentally that they, they buried his body. They hid his body under some trees and covered the body up. So it's very remarkable. Um, some of these stories about how bright and, and they just seem to know what, what we humans are thinking as well. You had a very unique experience, obviously following in their path on foot with an incredible guide. What is the best way for someone who is watching this now and wants to learn more about elephants? What is the best way for them to experience it themselves? Well, there's, there's lots of great um, safari operators out there. I'd say go on a safari. And, and if you get the opportunity to do a walking safari, um, there's nothing quite like it. You know, it's, it's a very, very special experience. I mean, I've done horseback safaris in Kenya in like Kipia. That was an amazing experience in a place called Burana. Um, and that's beautiful because you're, you know, you're on these hills, very big hills, and, and the elephants um, uh, are, are there climbing up these beautiful mountains. So it's, um, it, I'd, um, I'd just go and try and do lots of different types of safaris. You know, a safari isn't just get in your truck, go out for a drive and come back. I think there's lots of different experience, ways of experiencing elephants. Um, and, and an experience in South Africa will be very different to one in Kenya, equally Botswana or wherever you might go. So um, just because you've been on a safari once doesn't mean that um, that's the end of the story. I think most people who go on safaris tend to get hooked on them, in, in my experience anyway. Um, and what about you? What are you planning to do next? So you've obviously covered the elephants very thoroughly. Is there another animal in your sights? Well, maybe. I mean, I've, I'm, I'm fascinated by there's a few species in particular that I, I'd love to study in more detail. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, hopefully um, if this does well and, uh, you know, there might be an opportunity to go and do a similar thing for, uh, for another species. But, yeah, it all depends on the current situation, really. I mean, hopefully, um, you know, let's see where we are in a few months' time. But um, I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to getting back out there and uh, carrying on with the travels. And what is it like launching a book in lockdown? It must be a very different experience to the one you'd imagined. Yeah, I mean, it's not great. I mean, sadly, book sales have been hit very heavily because of uh, this. I mean, even now, you know, most book sales do happen in shops rather than online. Um, and particularly the, you know, the small independent booksellers are, are really struggling. And um, so I just encourage people, you know, buy from the smaller sellers, you know, and uh, if they've got a website, get it, get it on there. And even if it costs you an extra couple of quid, you know, it's keeping those guys in business. Um, I'm just hoping that, um, you know, if my book can do anything, you know, I'm, I've been selling it through Stanford's um, where 10% of the sales go to the Tusk Trust, which is my, uh, one of my charities. And, um, you know, hopefully the book can do some good in, in encouraging people to support charities. Is there anything else we can do to help? I think the key thing is really to um, to support charities that are doing great stuff on the ground, whether that's Tusk or Space for Giants or the David Sheldrick Wildlife Foundation and all these amazing charities that that, that help to support conservation. Um, I think that uh, you know you can you can help financially um, or indeed you know as soon as the opportunity arises, get yourself back out and support the local economy by going on safari um, and encouraging tourism where it's most needed. Super. Well, thank you so much, Lewison, and good luck with the launch. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.